Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, ES opened on a large gap higher, and since then, it has been balancing within a range with responsive sellers active at the 11 to 13 resistance zone. Now, even though the overnight session has been relatively bullish, we have to keep in mind that on the larger time frames, the market is still in more of a bearish pattern, and that means that sellers can be active on first test of resistance, we saw that in the overnight session at the 11 to 13 area where sell side continued to be active there. So heading into the open, 11 to 13 is going to continue to be valid resistance. Uh, we just have to be a little careful because the market has already responded to that zone in the overnight session. So we need to see how the market opens up, what level of momentum we're seeing in real time, and then base our decision on whether to uh, short 11 to 13. But uh, given that we don't really have any economic catalyst on the calendar today, and then we have the U.S. election tomorrow, it's unlikely that we're going to break out from this price and then actually sustain it and continue going higher. Now, we need to assess that in real time. But uh, given the bigger picture bearish structure that has been in place, and uh, given where ES is trading, it's more likely that uh, sell side will be active. If not at 11.13, then maybe at higher prices. But uh, the reward to risk and um, just the probability of a continuation to the upside is very questionable. So uh, it makes sense to be cautious at the very minimum on the long side and perhaps uh, look for short setups at 11.13. And if that doesn't hold, then on the upside, the 1775 to 1975, the 2075 high volume node, the 24 half to 26, those are all very good areas for responsive sellers to step in and then push the market right back down. So right now, the risk is more on the buy side at these higher prices near some pretty decent areas of resistance. And then on the downside, the overnight support is at 0.275 to 0.475. That is a minor area of support, and uh, it can be taken out. Below that, we have initial support at 96 quarter to 98 quarter, with the 2098 HVN from just the previous three-day balance. So that's a nice downside objective in the event of a failure at 11 to 13. Uh, buyers can be active there on first test, but uh, the safer spot to uh, expect buyers is going to be even a little bit lower within Friday's range. So if we start dropping back into 94 quarter and below the 91 to 93 zone, that is a higher odds area for responsive buyers to be active. By that point in time, we would likely be exhausting the range. And um, it's not like we're expecting a major sell-off either. Um, you know, the idea is that we're probably going to continue to balance within a range heading into tomorrow's election. And uh, that means if we attempt a breakout, it's probably going to fail. Uh, again, we do have to assess that in real time. We have to time it correctly, make sure that we're not going against any massive momentum. Or if we are, then we're securing very good trade location. And then on the downside, uh, you know, it's still going to be risky for new buyers to step in. Uh, because, uh, you know, the market can just continue to balance and chop in a range even as it moves lower. So the first area of decent support is 96 quarter to 98 quarter. Uh, but the deeper we push into that recent three-day balance, the better the reward to risk and the probabilities uh, for a long setup to work out. So uh, 91, 93 is a better spot. And then below that, we don't really have any very uh, specific zones. Uh, the market can bounce at 88.75, at 85 quarter, you know, somewhere in that area. Uh, the next major zone is 78.75 to 81 quarter. Very unlikely that the market would get there today. Uh, but again, it's something that uh, we will have to assess in real time. But given the large gap up, it's unlikely that we're going to, uh, you know, completely reverse this type of overnight strength, uh, especially because the overnight session is actually held up, uh, you know, fairly well here. So 
we know that the overnight session has been quite bullish, but again, the bigger picture is still uh, supporting a more balanced type market. And uh, that's why we have to be very cautious on long setups up here. Um, you know, at 11 and 13, these are just uh, uh, very poor prices to be initiating new longs. So at resistance, our focus is going to be more on the short side. We're going to be cautious on long setups until the market pulls back to better trade location. Uh, the earliest would be 96 quarter, 98 quarter, and uh, the better and safer spot is going to be even lower into Friday's range. And then if you are taking a long setup uh, at these higher prices, uh, just be very sure that the underlying momentum is there and really favoring the longs because that's really going to be a requirement uh, for longs to work from here. Uh, you need to see that underlying momentum on the NYC tick. Uh, the advanced decline line is going to open at a very high value given the strong gap up. So we're not going to be as concerned with the advanced decline value. Uh, we're going to be focused more on the trend of the advanced decline line. Uh, you know, if it's uh, clearly trending lower, then it tells you that the underlying market is not really supporting these higher prices. And then we know that the bigger picture market structure is not really supporting buyers up here either. So uh, then that can make a case for shorting the market, looking for a move back down into 96 quarter to 98 quarter. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. Let's see if the sell side can step in and be active here at the 11 to 13 or in the event of a move higher at the next resistance zones and we'll take it from there.